everybody. Welcome to another week of online learning. And uh, this is the week May 18th to the 22nd. This week we're going to be looking at free verse poetry. Um, just for the record, free verse poetry is one of the more common forms of poetry. It is today the one that is by far the one that poets use the most often. Um, and basically, it tries to destroy rules. It tries to take the rules that we've been talking about in form up until now and just throw them all out the window. Um, and But still, at the same time, try to get uh, feelings across, tries to get themes across, tries to say things in a new way. So it's trying to create art without all the rules. Um, we've talked about some of these forms of poetry. Um, some of them um, we are not going to get to talk about, but the common forms of poetry um, that you hear about in seventh grade or up until seventh grade, we've talked about ballads. And as you recall, um, ballads are narrative in structure. They tell a story, they have a rhyme scheme. Um, it's uh, usually A, B, C, B, um, and they usually have a pattern of syllables per line. We talked about odes and how odes um, are praising someone or something. Um, usually they're written to a, an object. Um, haiku, as you recall, were, um, was a lyric form of poetry. Um, it wasn't telling a story, but it was trying to get an emotion across, um, nature related usually. Mm -hmm. And as you recall, Tonka was a form of poetry that um, had a certain set of syllables per line, um, and it had a shift after the first three lines so that it shifted from the object that it was talking about and the scene that it was talking about to focus on a um, emotion that the poet felt um, in response to that object. Um, we did not talk about concrete poetry, but most of you have seen concrete poetry before, um, where it's a poem, you know, if it's a poem about um, a snake, the words of the poem might be written in such a way that it takes the shape of a snake. Um, sonnets are Shakespearean poetry, um, popular in Shakespeare's time, 14 lines long, had a certain number of syllables per line, had a certain number, had a certain rhyme scheme, that was the A, B, a, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Um, so it's a longer poem and it has a very set rhyme to it. And uh, limericks are an Irish form of poetry. And, you know, they say there once was a man from, and, it, you know, if they follow a certain um, line and syllable thing too, um, and they're usually more humorous. So all of these have a certain structure to them, and um, which is very different from free verse where there actually is no structure. Um, some terms that we want to make sure that you know. I know you know stanzas are um, poem paragraphs, and when you have a poem that is um, following a certain form, you usually have a certain number of lines per stanza, and they follow that pattern over and over and over again. Um, line breaks in a poem you very seldom see a time when a line of poetry goes all the way across the page from one margin all the way to the other margin. Um, it's not like in prose, which is when you type things in paragraphs, it's not like in prose where you get to the end of the line and it just wraps around and keeps going and you're writing in paragraphs. Um, with poetry, you decide where you're gonna break the line. And that's directly related to this last term, enjambment. Um, enjambment is when you might be continuing a phrase onto the next line of poetry um, with no commas, no periods, no change in punctuation. So for instance, this one, it rained a little everywhere but here, is a poem that shows you enjambment, where the, the lines are just broken, where the poet felt that they needed to be broken because the poet felt they needed to sound a certain way or feel a certain way. But you don't get an entire sentence, you don't get an entire phrase written out, um, and you don't even have commas and periods. It's all one continuous phrase, just broken the way that the poet wants it to look and feel on the page. 
free verse poems break the rules. There are, you know, for hundreds and hundreds of years, poetry primarily coming out of Europe and Asia had either rhyme or a certain number of syllables per line. It was very set and there were patterns and you followed the patterns. And free verse poetry just does not feel the need to have a pattern. Maybe it has a pattern for a little while and then moves away from the pattern for a while. And then it circles back around and repeats a couple things. And the goal is to be very artistic, to just sort of shift around and not follow a pattern um, if you don't need to. Um, there is, it is by far the most common form of poetry, especially today, especially in modern times. It does not need to rhyme um, or follow a rhyme scheme. It might rhyme, but it does not need to have some kind of rhyming pattern. Um, it does not need a syllable pattern or a certain number of lines per stanza in any kind of pattern. In fact, as soon as you really get a pattern going, you've made it not free verse. Um, and it usually uses figurative language and sound devices, but it doesn't really have to. So um, when you're done with today's video, you're gonna be reading a poem um, called Valentine for Ernest Mann by Naomi Nye. Um, she, Nye is a poet who currently lives in um, San Antonio, and uh, she calls San Antonio her home, but she feels that, uh, you know, she's moved around quite a bit in her life, um, including a time when she was living in Jerusalem um, because her um, she is half Palestinian. Um, Palestinians uh, are living in Israel, um, and they are, there's, you know, many of you know that there's a huge struggle between um, the Israelis and the Palestinians who uh, who live in Israel. And so she went and lived with her grandmother um, there for a period of time, and she said it was life changing. And it impacted a lot of the poetry that she would write. She is still alive. Um, she was born in 1952, I believe. And um, she, her, one of her first books of poetry was called Different Ways to Pray. And it's really a, her reflections on the similarities and differences between different cultures on earth, because she really feels that she is um, a collection of religions and cultures. Um, and she has experienced many different religions and cultures where she's lived and, um, and sort of in her background and her family. Um, there is a skunk here for a very real reason. It will show up in the poem. Um, you will actually follow the link to listen to the poem first and, um, and her reflection on it. She actually talks about um, how, what, what inspired her to write the poem because it is based on an actual situation where um, she was asked to write a valentine for Ernest Mann. And skunks um, are also involved in the poem. So um, you will read that poem, you'll listen to that poem, and then there are some questions to work on um, in relation to it. Um, Billy Collins, we read a poem by him um, already um, in this unit. Actually, I think um, one of the first poems that we read in this unit, we read by him. Um, Billy Collins was the poet laureate of the United States for um, from 2001 to 2003. Um, you probably don't know this, but in Washington, D.C., there is a library called the Library of Congress. It's actually three buildings, um, and it is, in fact, the library that um, Congress uses um, but it is our library. It's the National Library of the United States. It is the largest library in the world. Um, it has things from all over the world in it, um, including our copyright office is inside the Library of Congress. Um, it is run by our government, and it has millions of um, videos and magazines and newspapers and books. Um, and it is a big deal to be in the Library of Congress. It is one of the oldest um, governmental uh, institutions we have. It was started in the year 1800, so not that long after we became a country. 
and um, they have a poet laureate that they name um, that gets paid $35,000 a year, and they are the person in charge of all things poetry related in the United States um, as long as they have that job. Now, most of them, that's not their only job. Most of them, first of all, have already written amazing poetry to become named poet laureate, and they're also usually um, writers, college professors, um, so they have other jobs that they're doing. But they are, in, in fact, um, the head of poetry in our country. And, um, and also partly decide what poems are going to be um, moved forward as famous in the United States. Billy Collins was Poet Laureate for 2001 to 2003, and he's actually most famous for writing a poem called The Naming, which, um, you know, in the United States, the Poet Laureate is not asked to write any poems um, while he or she is Poet Laureate. Usually they do, but they don't have to. Um, other countries make their Poet Laureates write a certain number of poems every year. Um, our Poet Laureates don't have to do that. Um, but Billy Collins did get asked to write a poem, which was very unusual. He was asked to write a poem by the head librarian of the Library of Congress after the September 11th attacks in 2001. And he wrote this poem called The Naming, which he has been very particular um, to keep it from being published very often. Um, it, I think he's only read it in public two or three times in um, the 19 years that it's been written. Um, he read it in 2002 publicly to honor um, the dead from the attack. Um, but the reason that he doesn't want it published is because he doesn't actually want to make any money or get that much fame from the attacks of 9-11. He feels guilty. He would feel guilty about that. Um, many of his poems are serious, but many of them are actually really funny. And the poem that's here um, for this week um, is actually from for an optional activity that we're doing this week, and it is called Introduction to Poetry. And it talks basically about how teachers ruin poetry for you by assigning you poetry and making you find meaning in it um, and therefore get rid of the fun of it, which oddly, the optional activity has you looking at poetry and trying to find the meaning in the poem that is telling you that it's ruined by trying to find the meaning in it. And there's irony in the fact that there's actually a lot of meaning in it. So um, so it's just kind of a witty thing, um, but this is an optional activity for this week. Next one, um, on Wednesday, um, sort of going back a little bit to our argumentative unit, um, trying to persuade people of things, um, Jason Reynolds, who is famous for writing the book Long Way Down, um, there's a video uh, on Wednesday um, that you can click. It's, I think, three and a half minutes, maybe a little longer, um, where he's talking about how people who are sort of reluctant readers are forced to read more, um, even though it's what they don't want to do. And he said it's kind of like giving somebody who's scared of dogs a pit bull. Now, my brother-in-law um, has pit bulls. My uncle has pit bulls. Um, they're all loves, but pit bulls have a bad reputation of being um, more attack guard kind of dogs. And so it would be like taking someone who's really scared of dogs and giving them this dog that has this really bad reputation. And what we should be doing is giving them a bunch of really cute puppies. And so this time, I want you to look at his argument for reading more poetry and, um, and see what you think. And then there's questions related to that. So um, on Thursday, um, there are selections from two uh, books. Um, and so there's like a poem from the book, The Crossover, which is written as poetry, and then questions under that. And then there's a poem from a book, Inside Out and Back Again, um, and questions under that. Um, the crossover by Kwame Alexander is, just to give you an idea about the whole book, um, the book itself is about two um, African-American uh, twin brothers in high school who 
through a bunch of diff- they both love basketball and so basketball has always been like a thing that's united them but they have sort of um for a bunch of different reasons started to drift apart and the entire book is written in poetry form so there so it's just a book of poems um that are narratively telling their story and um Thana Lai um wrote inside out and back again um about and it is also a book that's in poetry form and it is about her when she was 10 years old um coming to the United States and um i think in the 70s and not being able to speak a word of english um and so she comes here um as an immigrant to the United States at 10 and this book is about her first year um in the United States and then friday there's uh you're doing a little poetry writing thing where you're writing a free verse poem but and there's two different options and um so you option 1 there's four different pages of writing um and each one is from a different book skim through do not read them all skim through and pick whichever one um you think you understand the most or looks the most interesting to you there's a page from insignificant events in the life of a cactus which um many of you uh listened to on learning ally um a book called the ice man um a book called wildfire and then this is a picture right here um from the story war of the worlds which is a very famous story about um aliens taking over earth and um so there's a page from each one of those stories and you are going to rewrite that page in free verse poem um form so there's no rhyming required but there could be but it shouldn't really follow a pattern and you will probably um i think it even asks you to use enjambment um but you know try to play around with the way that it looks on the page and um but the goal is to not get stuck into any kind of pattern to really try and break rules and break patterns not follow them um the other option they there is um the poem valentine for ernest man which is the poem that you are reading today um by naomi nye um but it has all kinds of blanks through it and you're basically rewriting that poem um using the organizer that is provided right um just as a reminder we are going to do office hours this week monday through friday at 3 p.m. i am going to try and spice up the office hours this week um i'm thinking that today monday um we i i don't know if we'll play a game or not i'm going to try and put out some kind of um idea of what we're going to do during different office hours and hopefully more of you will join us um we've got a pretty consistent group of um students who come um on a regular basis or a semi regular basis um but some of you i have not heard from since march 13th and i'd love to even if i don't see you if you if you turn your camera off um it'd be nice to just interact and uh, connect with you guys again um you don't have to um but it would be nice to just uh you know see you guys again or hear from you again um you're going to submit all your work on teams there are still people who are sending me their work um as attachments to emails and if that's the only way you can do it that's fine but you don't have to download and then upload again anymore i've been making it all editable for you um don't forget that next weekend is a long weekend um for memorial day so we will not have um the video on monday we'll have it on tuesday we will not have work on monday we will not have office hours on monday um so this is the last monday for 2 weeks there is may june extra credit of, on my website um which is there for you to do and there are now 4 and 1/2 weeks until you are in the 8th grade um until we hit summer vacation and you can officially call yourselves 8th graders um and uh so you know there's two things to think about with that one there's still over a month left so you really do have to do the work um 
and get as much as you can out of this um, because you know it's already hard enough with you guys not being in the classroom with me um, to then not do it at all or only do it every once in a while um, really puts you uh, behind quite a bit and, and out of practice for the fall um, also it means that we only have four and a half more weeks together um, all the more reason that um, I want you to pop in to office hours um, and say hi um, because pretty soon you will be off to a new group of teachers um, so I want to make sure that uh, I get to connect with you guys again before we all go away for the summer all right um, so good luck with your work this week and feel free to contact me with any questions talk to you later